Uh, happy St George's Day. <laughs> 41% of people in a recent poll said that one of the reasons that England's National Day is not celebrated more is that it is not a bank holiday. Well, we in UKIP intend to put that right. As you can see from our manifesto, we will declare St George's Day a bank holiday and similarly St David's Day a bank holiday in Wales. This new bank holiday will provide a much needed, popular and completely inclusive opportunity for people to come together, to celebrate if they want to, to express pride in our values, our history and our achievements. We in UKIP have no inhibition in celebrating these things and we believe that neither does the public. A country is not just its economy and its identity cannot just be read on a balance sheet. We believe in our hearts and our minds that this is a great country to be proud of and part of. But for too long, I think we have lived with a political and cultural establishment which has shown a sort of disdain for England, which has doubted Britain as a whole and has discouraged pride in it. Their embarrassment about our past, their lack of concern for our history has permeated our culture. So now, many young people know little about the country in which they live. The patriotism of the many is often sneered at. We have a society which seems to live in a state of cultural cringe. People have been encouraged to believe that national pride is exclusive or that it's dangerous or that it's bigoted and should therefore be discouraged. Indeed, we have seen in recent years instances where the displaying of the flag was discouraged for fear of causing offence. The truth is, there is no evidence whatsoever that any part of our society or any ethnic or religious minority has in any way ever taken offence. Instead, people have often taken offence on their behalf when it has not been asked for or needed. It was George Orwell, Orwell who famously wrote that the English intelligentsia was unique in the world in its distaste for its own nationality. They would rather steal from a poor box, he said, than stand for the national anthem. This finds its modern equivalent in the contempt for the national pride of ordinary people, which we have seen very recently. Emily Thornberry's infamous tweet summed up much of this attitude. The simple displaying of an English flag was enough in her eyes to condemn the people who had put it there. But we in UKIP reject this negativity. We think that such cultural self-loathing is destructive. We believe that benign patriotism is a force for good, a force for unity. We saw this in the summer of 2012 when people came together to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee and the Olympics. However, such events as those are few and far between. A new annual national holiday on St George's Day is the perfect way of establishing a regular date on our national calendar which will further increase the sense of unity throughout the country. A totally inclusive unity for everybody living in our country. We believe that this will prove enormously popular. The old parties have not listened to the increasing numbers of people who believe we should mark St George's Day. They do not take it seriously. We in UKIP do because we believe it too. Thank you very much and happy St George's Day. Patrick. Joe. How are you Can I call be... you Joko? <laughs> no. <laughs> Joko Burn Daily Politics. How are you going to be celebrating St George's Day? What do you say to those who claim a public holiday will damage the economy? And can I see you wear one of these hats? Shall we <laughs> try to do the mental feat of answering them in reverse order? Uh, so the first, the first answer will be, uh, no, I'm not going to put one of those hats on. I think the depiction might be a little harsh. Um, I think the first one was how... how I'll, I'll jump back to the first one. Um, I hope to have a pint of London Pride in the local uh, pub close to our headquarters and uh, toast St George and uh, England and Englishness briefly at lunchtime. Uh, on the economic point... 
Well, actually, uh, I don't accept that there's necessarily any net economic loss at all. In fact, plenty of studies have shown that these uh, national days, public holidays, give a big consumer boost to the economy. Uh, and I know that's one of the things that uh, the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee sometimes worries about is, uh, you know, the lack of consumer spending. Well, on the consumer side, certainly, you, you know, sales and therefore production in advance of a public holiday of certain uh, commodities, whether it's uh, uh, some of the tasteful memorabilia uh, that you, you've got or whether it's... Uh, uh, food and drink will, will go up and it will be a boost or flag makers will get a boost to business. So uh, it's not just a matter of uh, a net loss. And if we're talking about the, the shape of the economy anyway, we're not anymore in a totally inflexible factory production line era where any stoppage involves, you know, mothballing long production lines. And we have much more flexible arrangements and people, you know, if there is extra work can make up the time as and when. So I don't accept there's any net cost at all. Uh, but nonetheless, some things are important than, you know, uh, a, a, a tiny incre incremental change in, in that week's economic output. And uh, we believe uh, that St George's Day is well worth adding to the ranks of public holidays. What do you, can I hold it, please? Okay. So I can't hold the microphone. Um, well, I'm 43 years old. Uh, um, can I ask you, Patrick, um, two things? You, you, well, you, you, well, sorry, I'm sorry, you, you, you um, uh, Peter. Yes. You talked about cultural self loathing. What's an example of that apart from the Emily Thornberry tweet? And also, in your manifesto, you talk about teaching a chronological understanding of British history. What does that mean exactly? Well, I think to take the first uh, point. Um, I think that, you know, quite often now we sort of say, well, you know, we should teach our values, promote our values, and uh, that seems to be a pretty mainstream um, a message that's given across. Um, but I think the best way of teaching those is actually as a story, and they should sort of emerge, really. You can't sort of sit people down and say, well, this is you know, freedom of speech, and this is equality before the law. Uh, these things sort of emerge through knowing, if you like, the chronological history of something. Um, and I think that that's why I think that that's very important. Um, Start with the Conqueror, do you, when you're seven, and you finish with the Queen, and you, when you leave school at left? Well, I don't know, that would ha that'd have to be set, but I would be quite good to go back before William the Conqueror, I think. Um, but I think that the, the point is, particularly if you think, that uh, this year we're celebrating the 800th anniversary of the Magna Carta. Um, you know, it's from that, that so many things flow. And I think that you pick up from a kind of, it's a little bit like a, a, a human life, an individual life. Uh, you know, the c characteristics and the values and beliefs or whatever emerge over, over a period of time. So that's why it's, I think, important not to have these things as topics that just stand there like yes. that randomly. Shouldn't? Yes, the Nazis are taught in schools, but that's what should not be taught in schools. What history shouldn't be taught in schools? Oh, I don't think any history should not be taught. I'm not. One for one, so if you're teaching more, more, more about Britain, what history should be taught? I think, I think uh, obviously, British uh, history, uh, the, the full sweep of British history, I think, should be taught because, um, you know, we have to, in a way, sort of pass on our story. Uh, you know, to, to people coming, I mean, uh, 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 um, coming after us. Uh, the sense is uh, that a, a country in some ways is, you know, people in the past, people in the present, and people in the future. So you have to sort of, uh, I think, uh, carry that on. I think that's terribly important, but all history <laughs> uh, is good. <laughs> Oh, sorry, could you repeat that? Sorry, Chris. Yeah, right. You talked there about the cultural self loathing. Mm. You, you referenced the Emily Thornby tweet. What other examples do you have of that? Well, I think it's sort of. Yes, I think that it's. Uh, uh, there's a sense, really, uh, that somehow. Um, when it comes to patriotism, for example, um, that, you know, a perfectly ordinary, benign patriotism is now. Many people do feel. It's slightly worried or slightly concerned that if they say that they're proud of the country, they're immediately going to be cast as somehow racist or bigoted or whatever. And um, I think it's obviously completely and utterly <laughs> untrue. Um, and indeed, you have to ask, well, where has that sort of come from? I mean, you know, why would that be the automatic assumption? And um, I think that, uh, you know, 
that is partly because over the past decades that has been the general sort of approach of a kind of maybe I would say excessive criticism um, of, uh, of, of Britain, of our history. Um, and I think that in some ways, you know, now we've actually, if you've got to like, re reduce the balance really. Um, I, I, I think people in this country have always been um, extraordinarily welcoming. They've always been extraordinarily open also to the world. And indeed, when uh, Demos did um, a survey about uh, patriotism some time ago, I think it was Demos, sorry, um, it was found that actually one of the reasons that people were patriotic about Britain was in fact the fact that we were so welcoming to people from outside. Um, I think as well, um, Chris, the underplaying of St George's Day by the establishment parties which we seek to correct is a pretty clear uh, example of, uh, of a discomfort and maybe a worry that the English form a very high proportion of the people of the United Kingdom and somehow the Englishness uh, needs to be repressed rather than celebrated. Yeah. Are you saying that flying, flying a, the Scottish flag is seen by some as being your race in some way? Is that what you mean by that? Well, I think that's what Emily Thornberry was certainly uh, implying, wasn't it, I think, possibly? Yeah, uh, well, no, I mean, or, or that somehow, I think there's a sort of snobbery, um, you know, as it were, about, you know, showing your pride in your country. Is it somehow or other this is a, a vulgar thing or, a, a, you know, it's... Why it, is it racism? I don't understand the link between the flag and racism. No, I think there is no uh, link, but I think, no, absolutely no link. Right. Um, but I think that m some people uh, certainly feel that they should be worried about flying the flag because they don't want, you know, they have imbibed this message that somehow this is an exclusive thing to do. Um, we don't think it is. So, Sanjay Suri from CNN, IBN Television in India. Uh, people of Indian origin form the largest minority in Britain. Mm -hmm. And there are reports to suggest that their per capita contribution to the economy is higher than average. We've recently had a very high migration from India of professionals mm -hmm. in IT, in manufacturing, other businesses. Does UK welcome all this? Well, absolutely. I mean, ab absolutely. Um, uh, you know, uh, w why wouldn't we? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Can I just say, I mean, our approach to immigration begins with the priority what's good for Britain exactly. and the British people. So we'll bring in an Australian style point system that will prioritize people with skills that the economy needs. And yes, it's very good news when people with, with uh, high level skills that are in short supply come and add value to the British economy. Uh, but what we won't do is, is simply say that the, the first priority should be who wants to come to our country. The first priority uh, is to look after the British people and make sure the people who do come, as in the, the experts you're talking about, are people uh, whose skills are needed and can add value and will accept the sort of core cultural values of the country too. Um, that's a little Daily Express. Um, UKIP has had a reputation amongst its um, detractors for, uh, you've been branded sort of bigoted and racist and so on. Um, are you, when you go out campaigning on the doorstep, do you still find a lot of people who assume that? Or are you, do you, th do you think more exposure about your wider policies is, um, is, is challenging um, that view? And are you finding a better reception? Well, I would say that the, that view among certain of the news media, you know, is, is uh, not reflected on the doorsteps. You know, we're the party that um, won the European election.